Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and Jim's Fix-It Shop has got a flu, I think. But we're going to try and put this together. <clears throat> and I'm going to try not to cough. <clears throat> I'm eating cough drops, so excuse me for that. And I may be drinking a little more than normal. Maybe I should, <laughs> Maybe I should be drinking and I wouldn't feel so bad. But we got to get this thing together. Uh, I don't know what your weather is like where you live, but my yard is just about full of leaves. Luckily, my boss isn't, so we got to get this together for him. You got your rear pan or your differential pan, and as if you can see, I welded the hole shut. For some reason, they have holes in these. I ain't going to go down that road. Um... Here's the board I use. I've shown this a lot. Just a piece of strip of plywood. Doesn't matter how wide it is. <clears throat> it's got a two inch hole and a three quarter inch hole. Three quarter inch hole doesn't go all the way through. All it's got to be is deep enough for the head of this bolt to sit into. They're three and three quarter inches apart. You got, you, this is the bolt that holds the sprocket and gear assembly in the uh, differential. It has a standard washer on it and it has a standard star lock washer in that order. <clears throat> then it goes through the case and you can set the little thing in your little handy dandy holder. Next you want to put on a rubber o-ring over the bolt. Next you put on your dished washer and you can call these anything you want. I've had a lot of comments. These are Belleville washers. Now I've had an email just today uh, I think it was from Mike. He says Jim you've got a knack for explaining things in layman's terms. Well, I'm sorry, but if I call this a Belleville washer, how many of you guys gonna know what the heck I'm talking about? So I'm gonna keep calling it a cupped shaped washer. It goes on over top your O-ring with the cup side down. You wanna capture that O-ring. That's what seals this bolt so it doesn't leak. So we're going to put that on. Next we're going to put on the tube that this sprocket rotates on. We're going to drop that on. Then you want to put your chain on your sprocket. Kind of stretch it so it don't fall off on you. Drop that in place. Next you want to put on your other cup shaped washer with the cup up this time on the bolt. Then your next o-ring goes on and push it down to the washer. Now what that does is it sandwiches everything between these o-rings when you get your fender on here and it doesn't leak. The next thing we want to do is take your hex tube. I've had a couple of comments saying what keeps the hex tube from rattling around on that three-quarter inch shaft? Well, if you look down inside, you can't see this end very good, but if you look in this end, you can see that yellow. That is a inserted bushing that the shaft spins inside of. So if you got a lot of slop or this thing's rattling around, your bushings are wore off. So we want to drop this in here next. Put the chain mesh it into the sprocket. There you go. Now the next thing we want to drop in is your axle assembly with the differential all bolted together. If you've got yours apart, you can take it and set it in this manner down in that two inch hole before you get this on and put it together. We set that down in there next and mesh these gears in. 
That's pretty simple. Now this is the washer that goes on the other side of your hex tube and you can tell because it has fingers bent up in a hexagon shape and it snaps inside of that tube. This one that goes on the other end is where you insert your shims to take up your side plate. I've had a lot of questions on where do we put these shims? When I get to that point, I'm going to show you because this is, has side plate in it. And it's going to have a little bit more because what I did to the bushing in the fender. When I get to that part, I'll show you what we did with that. So this is pretty much basically together. What we got to do now is go over here and grab the gasket and that lovely Permatex and uh, maybe a couple of gloves. Okay, we got our gasket and I got my glove. I've had a, <laughs> I've had a lot of comments on these too. Well, I'm sorry, but it's a whole lot easier to peel this off it is to try to wash this stuff off your hands. Now I'm going to put a layer all the way around this cover. You don't need a whole lot because as you tighten it up it's going to ooze out everywhere. You don't really want that crap inside on these gears and, and sprockets. So use it kind of sparingly. You just need enough to seal it so you don't lose your lubricant depending on what you want to use. It's totally up to you. I'm not suggesting one way or another, but my boss said he wants to go with 8090 gear loop. Um, I probably should have showed you that first, but on this case, the same as this case, these little holes that I've told you about, we welded them shut. So there's no longer a hole there. So let me pause you and I'm going to smear this stuff on here and try to keep it off my shirt. Okay, we got that mess on there. Now, these gaskets only go on one way. There are more holes on one side than there is on the other. And the reasoning for that is because when your machine is down on its wheels, this side is down. So they put the bolts closer together to hopefully keep it from leaking. The top side you don't have to worry so much about because well unless you roll this thing over on its side it shouldn't leak up there. So we're going to drop this down on here. Nice thing about this Permatex is it keeps the gasket where you want it so you can get the cover on. Now, speaking of the cover, I'm going to put some Permatex on this right now, seeing I'm all gooped up. But first, let me tell you about the bushing. Where is the bushing? I lost the bushing. I guess I did. It was right here a minute ago. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> I'm going to pause you. Well, it's a good thing I have two of them because I have no clue where that other one is. I'll find it someday. <clears throat> this is the bushing I ordered from Park Street. These are not brass. These are powdered metal. And they're shot or sprayed or pumped into a dye and compressed into this shape. That's why they can sell them for five dollars. If they were brass and machined, I'd guess you'd probably pay about 35-40 bucks for one. But it would last longer. This one was oversized. It was not to factory specs. So I called them, they sent me another one, which is floating in space somewhere. That one also was out of spec, as far as I was concerned. I guess for being a, a machinist or a machine repairman like I am for so many years, 
I guess I hold myself to a little bit higher standard than the amount of slop that is on that bushy. We put that on here. And that's as much slop as what the old one was. So I used the old one. But I repaired it. <clears throat> I didn't have time to do it, so Mr. Tim, that owns this machine, he has a machine shop in his garage. So I says, Tim, I pressed this out. I said, take this home and this hunk of brass and make me an insert. I have to move something. Sorry, the camera was sitting on a piece of cardboard and it kept wiggling. <clears throat> I had him take this home and as you can tell by the color on the inside of this, I had him make an insert. We pressed it in there <clears throat> and remachined it with two thousandths clearance. That's plenty. The reason <clears throat> I would have rather had one thousandths clearance, but the reason we had to go to two thousandths is the axle is egg shaped <clears throat> and it is actually bent and that came from the wheel hub being assembled on here and when they put the bolt through that holds the wheel hub on they tightened it up and they actually crushed the wheel hub and this axle this axle is out of round by two thousandths of an inch now that's no big deal but when you're trying to get a bushing over that <laughs> That causes a problem. So we had to make this bushing with two thousandths clearance, which should not be a problem as long as we got oil going in it. And if you can tell, this is a way it's mounted on the machine and you have your oil grooves up and down. That's so when this gears and chain in here are flying around and it's throwing oil, it's going to run down it's going to find that crack and it's going to go down and lubricate this bushing. Now let me throw some of that gup on this thing and we'll get back with assembling. Now when you use this stuff, they call this non-hardening. Don't believe it. This stuff gets hard just like anything else. And uh, every time I do a job, I buy a new tube of this because usually it it starts to get thick. It's hard to spread. I don't get a nice even coat. So I just throw it away and I buy another one. So the next thing we want to do is get the cover on this thing. Let me grab a couple of tools. Okay, what I just did is this gasket was extremely wide. And it had a lot of overhang inside of the differential, and I cut some off of it. All you need to gasket is between where the bolts go. You don't need all that hanging inside of there to get caught on something. So we cut some of that off. <clears throat> okay, we got all the parts in there. We got our little washer and the other O-ring. We can put the cover on. Now this goes on a little bit hard because the fit is so tight. And that's about it. Now grab the bolts to pull Okay, went and grabbed the bolts. I had to take the cover off because I forgot. I have a thrust washer. It has to go on here first. It goes between the end of the short axle and the bushing. Don't want to forget that. Now we'll put this back on. Maybe. Now we have it together. 
You know what the problem was with that? There's 13 bolts that hold this thing together. You just you just know that should have should have told you right there it's going to be an issue. So we're going to get these started in here and tightened up, and I'll be right back. Okay, we got all these snugged up. Now, whenever you're putting something together like this with a lot of bolts, don't put one in and tighten it up. Put them all in to get them lined up right, then start snugging them down. I just kind of jump around back and forth all over the place just because it's fun. <clears throat> and then I go around the outside and make sure I got them all tight. Now, I'll let this set for, I don't know, maybe till tomorrow morning or something. And I'll go back and make sure these are all still tight. Sometimes that cork gasket will compress and these will actually be loose again. Then the last thing is put this nut on this bolt. Now this nut is a self-locking nut. See the teeth on it? There's nothing else you need. Don't put a washer under it because then it could come loose. Just want to screw that on and tighten it up. <clears throat> now you can turn this and make sure everything works good. That turns really nice. Spin your hex shaft. That will turn your sprocket and chain. Make sure nothing's binding in there because if it is, this is when you want to take it back apart. And this bad boy is done and assembled. Now this, the other washer. You can't put this on until you slide this assembly through your chain case. Because this washer is bigger than the hole in your chain case. But this is one of those washers that has the teeth sticking up. And you have to line it up with your hex shaft and snap it in there. This is an actually is a thrust washer. And what this rubs up against is the bushing in the other fender. Just like when I had to pull this cover back off and put the thrust washer on this side next to the bushing, that's what this one is. Now your side plate on your machine, I get a lot of questions on how do I get rid of my side plate? This doesn't want to stay snapped in there for some reason. <clears throat> Let's put this thing in here this way. That's what these little shims are for. I bought a bunch of these because I don't know how many I'm going to need. This had side play before I tore it apart. Then when I rebuilt that bushing, or when my boss rebuilt it, he faced the front off to get it smooth again because it actually had some wear from this thing trying to move back and forth. So I got some of these and these go on up against that washer. Then your other fender goes on. So these little shim washers are trapped between this steel thrust washer and the end of the other bushing. How many of these will you need? You have no idea until you put this thing back together. There are Permatex. You have two different styles of these. One is a circular spacer that you have to put on when this thing is apart. The other ones they sell, they have a notch cut out of them. Not just, it's not just cut. There's an actual area that is missing. So it looks like a C. Them, you can leave your machine together. You loosen the boot up on this bushing on the other fender. You pull the boot out of the way and you just snap these in. Much easier to do. And you just snap in as many as it takes 
to get your side play out. Very simple. And that's about all we're going to do today. We're going to push in 20 minutes now. And the next video is going to be shoving this thing together in the machine. So don't miss it. If you're not subscribed, please do. It doesn't help me financially at all. <clears throat> what it does help subscribers and you push the little thumbs up if you like the videos what that helps do is when you google and say I I want to fix my snapper it is gonna pull out and give you probably 10 or 15 videos and it's gonna pull out the ones with the most subscribers and the most thumbs up so you're not going to help me as much as you're going to help someone else that's trying to fix their machine that's that's all it's for unless I get like 600,000 subscribers they may actually stuff commercials into my videos which are a big nuisance I always delete them myself but hey, that's just me so if you have any questions or comments, put them in the little box below, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. So until then, work safe, have fun, and stay out of the permatex. See you soon.